well, I think the slides are not going to work very well. I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> I'm still trying to get to the beginning. All right. So um, my slides are online at this URL, which is what I'm trying to show in a really crappy browser. I started the PHP project back in 1993 or so, um, writing lots and lots of code in C that looked like this. Um, I don't expect you to be able to read it. Um, can I kill this? A little bit better. Um, so I lo wrote lots and lots of code like this in C, and it just didn't work. It, it was too much putting HTML inside C code and recompiling just for minor little changes. So I wanted something better. And a lot of people, which one's never? This one? This one? This one? Thank you. <laughs> so um, lots of people switched to using Perl, something called CGI PM, which is a Perl module for writing web applications. And I still didn't like it. I didn't like the fact that I was writing HTML tags inside another language. I wanted something that looked more like that. right? So I wanted HTML to look like HTML. And I wanted a few magic tags mixed in to do interesting things. Um, and this is, this is what I wrote, basically. I wrote a very simple templating system that let me access and assign tags to my C code. So all my business logic was written in C, but I got access to it via this templating system. And it made it much, much easier to hand off the design of a site to somebody else. I could write the back end code in C. The designer could then design the page and have access to the business logic that I provided. And that was the original intent of PHP. The original intent of PHP was as a templating system for exposing business logic written in a strongly typed language like C or C++ and make it really, really easy to build a website based on these components that you would write in C or C++. As it turns out, that's not quite how people used PHP. Um, what ended up happening was that PHP came right at the time when the web was exploding. Web developments were going crazy. People were trying to get their ideas online really, really quickly. And there weren't enough C developers and C++ developers that were interested in doing web development. Most of them found it a little bit. It's a fad. It's never going to go anywhere. It's not real programming. They weren't that interested. And you ended up with a lot of non-programmers that were assigned to be the web development team. It usually started at companies where companies said, well, let's put something on the web. Let's put a web page up, and let's start by putting out documentation online. So they would ask their technical writers, hey, guys, can you put your documentation online? Sure. Microsoft Word, save as HTML, copy it to the web server. Great. We now have a website with some content. But then the month after that, they might come and say, well, could we put our inventory and our price list and things online? Oh, by the way, all this stuff is stored in a database somewhere. So technical writers, documentation team, just go do that. Connect to the database, write a dynamic website. And there is no save as dynamic website in Microsoft Word. They were kind of stuck. How are we going to solve this problem? How are we going to build dynamic websites quickly? And that's where a lot of people stumbled on PHP. Everything about PHP was geared at the web problem. All the documentation had examples of how to do things um, on the web and how to solve basic web problems like that. So people loved that. Lots of copying and pasting of examples directly into people's sites. And it just worked. First thing they tried usually worked. So at that point, I kind of shifted gears. I gave up trying to convince people to write stuff in C or C++ because there just weren't enough people interested in doing that. And I focused more on the ecosystem around PHP as a web solution. So one of the things that I focused a lot on was um, how are people going to use PHP? How are they going to get access to it? And one of, that, one of those things was the shared hosting ISPs, right? Most people didn't have their own server in the data center. They would have to 
buy for 10, 20, 30 dollars a month, they would have to buy some shared virtual host somewhere. So lots of features in PHP, like memory limits and time limits and things like that, were geared at ISP. So an ISP could safely provide PHP to the users, even though the users were sharing the same web server. Um, I also looked a lot at performance and robustness to make sure that the model that PHP was working in, so a, a shared nothing, non-threaded, process-based model, very robust, very easy to recover from failures. I mean, you could put up a web server that would seg fault a thousand times a day, and you wouldn't notice. If you did the same thing with a Java application running under a JVM, if that thing seg faulted a thousand times a day, your site was done because the JVM had lots and lots of threads. If one thread caused it to seg fault, it would take down the other 2,000 threads that were running at that point. Within a, with a process-based model, one request can take down that particular process, that instance, and it doesn't matter. It only affects that one request. Um, I remember in the early days of Yahoo, we were seg faulting lots and lots of times every single day, but it was like 0.00001% of the requests. So it wasn't that big a deal. I still needed to fix it, but it didn't prevent us from, from growing and, and running the business. And this idea that LAMP, like LAMP, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, it wasn't an accident. There were actually a few people behind this idea of, of putting these pieces together and providing an end-to-end -end solution for solving web problems. And by doing so, by really putting the pieces together and making sure that all the pieces talk to each other well, you gave people an actual solution and not just words and ideas. It was an actual, here it is. Here's, you put, a whole, put these things together, you have everything you need to solve the web problem. And that was an extremely powerful thing as the web was growing like crazy. Being able to say, here is a solution. Install these things, put them together this way. Here's some example code. Go, you can build anything you want. It scales infinitely because there's nothing that's shared. I mean, this shared nothing architecture I talked about, because there's nothing shared, if something doesn't scale, it was something you did. There's nothing in the architecture on the platform itself that stops you from scaling horizontally as far as you can. Um, and the other thing on scale that's really interesting, I think, is that we did a lot to scale PHP down, to make it accessible at the low end of the spectrum. And of course, we also worked on, on the other end. That's a natural thing for engineers. Engineers love making things faster and uh, more efficient. Um, so scaling up is kind of a natural thing for geeks. Scaling down is really, really hard, which is kind of surprising but it's really hard to sort of put yourself in the shoes of a non-technical person and say, okay, look, if I don't know anything, what might trip me up as I'm getting started? And that's really difficult for a geek to do because we kind of look at the folks that don't know anything and go, oh man, forget them, right? But when you do that, you lose this initial user. You lose all these users that are just learning. And we were all, completely ignorant at some point. We're all starting out, and we all hit hurdles like this. And I think that's one of the most important things about PHP is that the breadth of, of the types of users that can use PHP is really wide. So we push all the way to the low end, and we push really, really far to the high end, up to the, the Wikipedias, the Yahoos, and the Facebooks, all in the same code base. Doing that is rocket science. Now, that also comes with a whole bunch of concessions where we have to make decisions where we can't do certain things that might serve users here because it would really adversely affect users here and vice versa. And it's really hard to make a product that's so broad that it appeals to everybody without also pissing a lot of people off in between. If you can't make everybody perfectly happy unless you shrink it and target one particular type of user and then make everything that particular user wants and then they'll be perfectly happy. But then you only have such a small share of it. With PHP, it's this wide. Everybody 
kind of hates PHP, but they use it anyway because, damn it, it works really, really well. And I love that. That's fine. That's perfect. Um, I see tons of criticisms about PHP that people write on their WordPress blogs. I'm like, go figure. So, <clears throat> um, so f I did like a few tangible, tangible things. Performance-wise, I wrote this mod PHP module to actually embed PHP inside the Apache web server. Um, I talked about the shared m nothing perfect sandbox model. Both of these are performance and scalability things to reduce the single instance latency, and also the shared nothing makes sure that we can scale horizontally. Robustness-wise, promoted the heck out of pre-fork model in Apache, making sure that everyone used pre-fork as opposed to some uh, threaded architecture. And also, I came up with the SQL limit clause. Some of the early databases, one particular I used was called mini SQL. It didn't have cursors. So if you, by mistake, did an SQL query that might return a million rows, you're sitting there waiting for all the data to come across the socket, and your application is hung until it has received all the data. You may only show the first 25 rows on the screen, because nobody ever shows a million rows in the web app. But you're still stuck waiting for it. So I added this limit clause to the database I was using to say, look, I'm only ever going to use the first 10. So limit 10. And this limit clause, now we probably all used it today in MySQL and Postgres and other databases. It kind of clicked with people, and people thought that was a good idea, and they used it um, in other databases after that. Um, and a few execution things, um, like talk about the ISP features, max execution time, memory limit. Safe mode was never really going to work well, but at the time, ISPs really needed something like safe mode. Um, probably a little bit misguided, even trying to attempt to solve this, but there was huge demand for something like this years and years ago. So this brings us into the present. Um, we're currently on PHP. 5.5, but many people are a little slow um, upgrading. But you really, really should get onto at least 5.4 soon. If you're running 5.2 or, heaven forbid, anything earlier than that, there's a lot of reasons to get onto PHP 5.4. We have made a lot of performance improvements. Um, on average, we're probably if you're coming from PHP 5.3, you're probably going to see about 15% impor performance improvement going to PHP 5.4. Stop using the connection, guys. Um, all right, so we have a bunch of performance improvements in PHP 5.4. Um, so fast CGI, the silence operator, there are lots of little things in there. And depending on what type of features you use, you'll see more or less improvements. Some of the other things in 5.4, there's a built-in web server now. Please don't use it in production. Um, we mostly use it for the tests. It's really cool during development as well. You can fire up PHP in a directory and put Mahi minus capital S, localhost, colon, 8,000. Then just point your browser at localhost 8,000, and that directory is your document root. So if you put some PHP files in there, you can fire up a web server really fast with the document root of your current directory. Many frameworks as well provide an actual router that you can pass to this so that you can run the entire framework directly from the command line, which is pretty cool. Um, traits are a new feature in 5.4. Basically, I call it compiler-assisted copy and paste. So you can have traits. It's, instead of having like a base class, you can now have a trait if you want to reuse a certain piece of code, like a logging method, for example. You can add a logging method to all your objects without having them inherit from a single base class where you put the logging. Because it doesn't really make sense for two objects that are not related at all to be in the same inheritance tree, um, just because they need one method. Um, so traits is a way of doing horizontal um, code reuse without having to do any sort of inheritance-based reuse. We have a short array syntax as well. So you can use square brackets instead of the array keyword. You can do function array dereferencing. So if you have a function like fruits that returns an array, you can dereference it right on the function call there, fruits, bracket zero, 
will give you the first element, apple in that case. You can, we slightly changed how we deal with all of this from the current scope in closure. So if you're defining a closure inside a class, dollar this is now available to that closure no matter where you call the closure from in your code. And a few other things. Um, this short echo syntax, the question mark equals, is now always available without short tags being enabled. We have a new session object, a callable type hint. We have a JSON interface. So if your object gets passed to JSON in code, you can implement this JSON interface, uh, JSON serializable. So you can, you can guide, you can write the code that shows JSON in code how to actually JSONify your object. We're using MySQL ND by default everywhere. MySQL ND is the native driver. It's a client library like libmysql client, but it's written specifically for PHP. And it's interesting because it uses the PHP memory manager. You get a lot of memory savings and some extra cool features this way, like asynchronous queries. So being able to actually asynchronous fire off queries to MySQL and then reap them as they come back when they're ready. Um, binary notation, so you can do 0x, of course, for hex. Now you can also do 0b for binary. Some crypto stuff and a few other minor things. Um, better Apache 2.4 support for Windows, if you're stuck on Windows. So, oh, yes, changing slides is now hard. Um, well, the next slide is a slide on the actual real world performance improvements that you see from this. Um, I ran it on some Etsy servers upgrading from 5.3 to 5.4 last year, and we saw between 12 and 15 percent improvement on user CPU, system CPU, and most importantly, about a 15% improvement on latency. Um, so there's a huge, I mean, if, if you're running a busy site and you're running 5.2 or 5.3, there's a huge impetus for you to get onto 5.4 or 5.5 um, because you get a free 15% performance increase from that. Yikes. <coughs> no, no. Right, so my test was PHP 5.4 plus a new opcode cache called opcache, um, and comparing that to PHP 5.3 uh, against APC. And I had a very cool, sexy graph right here, as you can see. <laughs> yes, you can imagine. Um, you guys can go look at that graph um, offline. I showed you the URL at the beginning. I will just go to the next slide, and we'll wait on that one. We should have cached the slides. <laughs> the first ones were good because I had flipped through a few of them, but we didn't flip through the rest of them, I think. Um, all right. so. 5.5 has a number of interesting new features as well. 5.5 has generators. Um, so generators is a way of calling a, a function that then generates a value. So say you have a function like uh, a range function, for example, that returns successive values. So you say range 1 to 1,000. And every time you call it, it, it returns the next value in that. So instead of writing a function that returns a big array of a thousand elements, you can call the function and it can return one element at a time. And the way you do that, you just write your code and at the point in that code, in the loop inside the function where you want to return the value, you say yield. You say yield and then the variable you want to return at that point. And it will then maintain the state um, of the generator. Ah, there's my sexy graph, but I have moved on. <laughs> so I think my slides are always going to be a minute behind my, my talking here. Um, 
hopefully. I thought we fixed the internet. We didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So when you're upgrading, if you're upgrading for something before 5.4, there's a few things that we changed that could trip you up. The world should be using UTF-8, and I'm trying to encourage that by making that the default as a PHP 5.4. If you're using other character sets other than UTF-8, you may have some issues. Um, you can always use other character sets, of course, but you have to explicitly specify the other character set when you're calling things like HTML special charge, HTML entities. Um, by default, these functions will assume UTF-8 now. And because we changed the default code that's currently written without specifying a char set and assuming like 8859-1, um, they could break or at least be less secure than there should be. There's also a new notice. So if you are echoing out an array, you've probably all done that. You see the keyword array show up on your web page suddenly. That's now going to generate a notice. Normally, that's a bug. Well, pretty much always, that's a bug if you see that. Register Globals is now completely gone. Magic quotes are gone. So if you rely on either of those, you need to do something. Remove variable break continues. Um, max input vars was an interesting thing that we added to avoid deliberate hash collision attacks. So about two years ago, there was a rash of these hash collision attacks against web servers, against Java, Python, Ruby, PHP, everybody, where basically you create, you construct a request that is specifically designed to create hash keys that collide given the hash algorithm of the language that you're attacking. So PHP has a hashing algorithm. When you send a whole bunch of variables in either a post request or a get request, PHP creates a hash like all of all the post vars, for example. So if you send a post request with 100,000 elements and you craft the field names correctly, you can get them to hash to the same bucket so that you have to symlink, go to the, like the 100,000 symlink to add the next one. Then you have to go through 100,001 1 symlinks to get to the next one. And that can end up doing a denial of service attack against the server. So we now have a limit by default that says you can't have more than 1,000 post elements um, or get elements. Generally, in a get request, you can't fit that many in any way because browsers have link limits. In a, put, in a post request, you can put a lot. So if this breaks your web application, you might need to increase this limit. Now, if you have more than 1,000 post fields, you might want to revisit your user interface. Who's going to fill out a thousand form fields on one page? That's generally not something that people will do. Yeah. Um, one place that does hit you, PayPal's IPM, instant payment notification, can send you post requests with more than a thousand fields. So if you're doing an instant payment notification endpoint, you might, for that endpoint, increase that limit. So stream select has changed slightly. There's a few things there. But if you're going through and upgrading, there are upgrade guides on php.net that will list all these things on this slide where you can go through and just check that, hey, there's nothing on this list of slight changes that applies to my code so you can feel safer doing the upgrade. 5.5, um, five. We have some performance improvement. Nested calls are a little bit quicker now. So if you have a lot of recursive things in your code, it should be quicker in 5.5. We have a call stack that's pre-allocated. just makes memory management a little bit quicker. We have now, with the big news in 5.5 is that we have bundled an opcode cache. Um, Sends optimizer plus is now the default cache in PHP 5.5. That opcode cache can work with 5.3 and 5.4 as well. So you can grab it off of peckle.php.net. You can grab the op cache and install it on 5.3 or 5.4 today uh, to get ready for 5.5. Then you have less changes to move to 5.5. Generators I talked about, right? You can write a function, um, then call yield where you want to yield a value as opposed to returning massive arrays from functions. 
We have a new keyword finally. So if you have a try catch um, structure and you have some code that you always want to run, whether or not an exception actually happened, you can put it inside the finally block now. Any sort of cleanup code would go in the finally block. Lists is now usable in for each. So you can do the first level of dereferencing. If you have nested arrays, you can dereference the first level right in the for each call using list. We also have constant array and string dereferencing. So if you have a constant array, you want the first element. I'm not quite sure why you want to do this, but for consistency, um, we added this. You can call empty on functions and expressions now. It used to have to be just variables. Now you can actually apply PHP's empty check to the return values of a function. We've rewritten curl. Uh, the curl upload functionality was kind of odd. It used an ampersand, and it was, it was flaky. Um, we've now rethought this and done a much better job on being able, from your PHP code, upload a file via curl to another site. Works much better now. And one feature I really like is the simplified password hashing API. Password hashing is tricky. You had all the tools available in PHP to do password storing correctly, but time and time again, we saw sites that would store passwords incorrectly. You always see stories about sites getting hacked in the password database where passwords were stored either in the clear or using no salt, maybe MD5 or crypt directly. And that's just not the way to store passwords. And people were just not getting it right. So now we have a simplified one that has sane defaults with salts and the right algorithms. You can just call password hash. And you will now be doing passwords correctly without having to think about it too much, which is one of these things of scaling PHP down, making sure that people who don't know about crypto at all are still just by default, they will get strong crypto for their password storage, which is really cool. One minute. All right. So <clears throat> if you're still running PHP less than 5.3 or even 5.3, please upgrade soon. Um, get on to 5.4, 5.5. 5 5.5 is still a little new. So if you are very risk averse, go to 5.4 now and plan on going to 5.5 early next year, as what would be my suggestion. Um, and contribute, help us out. Um, Bugs.php.net could use some help. If you know PHP really well, we could use some help triaging the various bugs that are um, submitted to us. We get tons and tons of bugs submitted. Most of them aren't actually bugs, but each one takes us time to process. We could use some help with that. Um, and the upgrade guides, so 5.2 to 5.3, 5.3 to 5.4. And like I said, the slides are right here. Go have a look through the slides since they look pretty crappy here. I'm sorry about that. Thank you.